Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE biology for the AQA specification, focusing on monoclonal antibodies, and in particular on producing monoclonal antibodies. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hi all, and welcome to tutorial one of two on monoclonal antibodies. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at the types of antibodies that there are, monoclonal or polyclonal. And then we're going to look at the process by which we can make monoclonal antibodies. So this can occur naturally, but also we can utilise this clinically by making them artificially and then using monoclonal antibodies in treatment. So to start off, let's take a closer look into monoclonal antibodies. So as covered in the last set of lectures on communicable diseases, antibodies are produced by B cells. So if you can't quite remember this process, then perhaps go back and watch the particular tutorial on this. So antibodies in general are specific, which means that they can only bind to certain antigens. So, for example, on this cell that we can see here, this is your cell, or this is, sorry, no, this is the antigen, which might be on the surface of a cell, for example, and this is your antibody that's binding the particular antigen. So these antibodies can be either mono or polyclonal, So monoclonal antibodies can only bind to a particular antigen structure. So they can only target very specific chemicals or cells. In contrast, polyclonal antibodies are still specific to a particular antigen, but they can recognize different variations of the same antigen. And this is the key difference here between mono and polyclonal antibodies, is that monoclonal antibodies recognise a specific type of antigen, whereas polyclonal antibodies can recognise different variations of the same antigen. And therefore you can see multiple binding sites for the same antibody. So the way I like to remember this is that mono, the stem mono means one, the stem poly means many, many, therefore Monoclonal antibodies can only bind to one particular type of antigen, whereas polyclonal antibodies can bind to the many variations of that same antigen. But don't actually worry too much about the difference between mono and polyclonal antibodies because the AQA specification doesn't actually require you to know the difference, but I'm just explaining it here just to make it clearer what a monoclonal antibody is to you. So now let's look into how monoclonal antibodies are produced. Well, as I said earlier, in general, antibodies are made when B lymphocytes are activated. And the B lymphocyte is activated and it then divides to produce plasma cells, which are your antibody making cells. So if you can't quite remember this, go back and watch that tut tutorial under communicable diseases because that will explain it in more detail. So as I said, this stimulates an antibody producing cell, a plasma cell, which is the B lymphocyte. And monoclonal antibodies are antibodies made from one clone of a B lymphocyte. So not different B, B cells making the same antibody. It's got to be the same B cell or, that se or a clone of that B cell that's making the antibody in order for it to qualify as a monoclonal antibody. Whereas just to contrast this to polyclonal antibodies, these are made from lots of different clones of B lymphocytes. So again, you can utilise the mono or poly stem of the word. So monoclonal antibodies are made from one clone of a B lymphocyte because the stem mono means one. Whereas polyclonal antibodies 
are antibodies made from multiple clones of a B lymph, or multiple different clones of a B lymphocyte. But again, remember you don't have to remember anything specific about polyclonal antibodies. So let's just take a look into how these, we, we've just covered um, on this slide here, how monoclonal antibodies are made naturally within the human body. But as I said earlier, in a clinical setting, we can make monoclonal antibodies artificially. So we do this by inserting a specific antigen into a mouse. So the monoclonal antibody you want to produce will have one specific antigen, and it's this antigen that is inserted into a mouse. And this will then initiate an immune response in the mouse, because the mouse is going to want to attack the specific antigen here that we are injecting into it. So its immune response is going to mount um, some kind of attack against this antigen. And as a result of this, antibodies against that antigen are created. So again, you may want to go back to your collection of videos on communicable diseases if this is not quite making sense to you. But anyway, all I want you to get from this current stage that we're at is that we've inserted an anti a specific antigen into a mouse, and therefore we've elicited a specific immune response within the mouse against that antigen. So we're going to have specific antibodies being made. And remember, it's the B lymphocytes that are making these antibodies. So this mouse that's now undergoing a very big immune reaction within it is going to have multiple B lymphocytes making our desired antibody. And it's the spleen that produces lots of lymphocytes, so we can actually harvest our B lymphocytes from the mouse spleen. So B lymphocytes are very slow growing, they divide quite slowly, or, you know, slower in the sense that we want to generate lots of antibody really quickly. So in order to speed this process up, we combine B lymphocytes with tumour cells because tumour cells are very, very fast dividing cells. So we combine the B lymphocytes with fast growing tumour cells called myeloma cells. And this forms fast growing hybridoma cells. So just to make that a bit clearer for you, these are myeloma cells here. And we've combined the B lymphocytes with your myeloma cells, and this is going to form a hybridoma. Then this same hybridoma cell is divided, is, 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 is forced to divide, or cloned, and it's used to make many hybridoma cells that will all make the same antibody. And then these antibodies can then be collected and purified. So I'll recap all of this now in a clearer form. So number one, we insert the antigen into a mouse. Number two, the B lymphocytes generated in the mouse's immune response are collected from the spleen. The lymphocytes are then combined with tumour cells, myeloma cells, to be specific, but you can just refer to them as tumour cells. A hybridoma cell is made and this hybridoma cell keeps dividing to make many hybridomas. And so we get lots of monoclonal antibodies made because they're all generated from one clone of B lymphocyte. So that's all for today. Make sure you go back through those stages of... Um, let me just get that back up for you. Make sure you go through all of these stages, perhaps annotate onto... Perhaps you could... Um, let me just get that slide. You could draw this diagram in your notes if I can get it up. No, it's not, not letting me go back. Oh well, but um, I mean the diagram of how monoclonal antibodies are made, you could draw that up in your notes and annotate on top of that and make sure you understand what a mon monoclonal antibody is. Remember it's produced by the same clone, that one clone of B lymphocytes and remember mono means one so that's how you can remember that it's produced from one clone of B lymphocytes. So that's all for today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below. 
and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.